Welcome back to section three of chapter six, Cancer and the Cell Cycle. By the end of this section, you will be able to explain how cancer is caused by uncontrolled cell division, understand how proto-oncogenes are normal cell genes that, when mutated, become oncogenes, explain how tumor suppressors function to stop the cell cycle until certain events are completed, explain how mutant tumor suppressors cause cancer. Cancer is a collective name for many different diseases caused by a common mechanism, uncontrolled cell division. Despite the redundancy and overlapping levels of cell cycle control, errors occur. One of the critical processes monitored by the cell cycle checkpoint surveillance mechanism is the proper replication of DNA during the S phase. Even when all of the cell cycle controls are fully functional, a small percentage of replication errors, mutations, will be passed on to the daughter cells. If one of these changes to the DNA nucleotide sequence occurs within a gene, a gene mutation will result. All cancers begin when a gene mutation gives rise to a faulty protein that participates in the process of cell reproduction. The change in the cell that results from the malformed protein may be minor. Even minor mistakes, however, may allow subsequent mistakes to occur more readily. Over and over, small uncorrected errors are passed from parent cell to daughter cells and accumulate as each generation of cells produces more non-functional proteins from uncorrected DNA damage. Eventually, the pace of the cell cycle speeds up as the effectiveness of the control and repair mechanisms decrease. Uncontrolled growth of the mutated cells outpace the growth of normal cells in the area and a tumor can result. So on this slide I have some of the requirements for a successful cancer, so uh, the steps that need to happen for a cancer to occur. And uh, this includes at least these things. So you have to have a way to lose contact inhibition. So normal cells, when they have neighboring cells around them, in either two dimensions, if they're in a cell culture in a plate, or in three dimensions, if they're in some kind of a cell scaffold, once they have fellow cells in contact with them, that's one of the external signals to stop reproduction. Now, for a cell to become cancer, it has to lose that inhibition and be willing to continue to divide regardless of what kind of cell contacts it has around it. Now, for large tumors, the forming tumor mass has to be able to secure a supply of blood. And that process of inducing blood vessel formation into your area is angiogenesis. Now, what is directly related to these proto-oncogenes is the loss of apoptotic regulation and the loss of cell cycle control, as previously mentioned. Apoptosis means programmed cell death, which uh, will receive more mention later on. Proto-oncogenes. The genes that code for the positive cell cycle regulators are called proto-oncogenes. Proto-oncogenes are normal genes that, when mutated, become oncogenes, genes that cause a cell to become cancerous. Consider what might happen to the cell cycle in a cell with a recently acquired oncogene. In most instances, the alteration of the DNA sequence will result in a less functional or non-functional protein. Okay, now I gotta say it. Most of the time, a mutation is gonna be neutral for reasons that will become apparent in uh, later chapters. The result is detrimental to the cell and will likely prevent the cell from completing the cell cycle. However, the organism is not harmed because the mutation will not be carried forward. If a cell cannot reproduce, the mutation is not propagated and the damage is minimal. Occasionally, however, a gene mutation causes a change that increases the activity of a positive regulator. For example, a mutation that allows CDK, cyclin-dependent kinases, 
a protein involved in cell cycle regulation to be activated before it should be could push the cell cycle past a checkpoint before all the required conditions are met. If the resulting daughter cells are too damaged to undertake further cell divisions, the mutation would not be propagated and no harm comes to the organism. However, if the atypical daughter cells are able to divide further, the subsequent generation of cells will likely accumulate even more mutations, some possibly in an additional genes that regulate the cell cycle. The cyclin-dependent kinase example is only one of many genes that are considered proto-oncogenes. In addition to the cell cycle regulatory proteins, any protein that influences the cycle can be altered in such a way as to override cell cycle checkpoints. Once a proto-oncogene has been altered such that there is an increase in the rate of the cell cycle, it is then called an oncogene. Tumor suppressor genes. Like proto-oncogenes, many of the negative cell cycle regulatory proteins were discovered in cells that had become cancerous. Tumor suppressor genes are genes that code for the negative regulator proteins, the type of regulator that, when activated, can prevent the cell from undergoing uncontrolled division. The collective function of the best understood tumor suppressor gene proteins, retinoblastoma protein, RB1, P53 and P21 is to put up a roadblock to cell cycle progress until certain events are completed. A cell that carries a mutated form of a negative regulator might not be able to halt the cell cycle if there is a problem. Mutated P53 genes have been identified in more than half of all human tumor cells. Now this is a more recent text so maybe just over 50% is more accurate now because when I first learned of this, it was closer to 80%. This discovery is not surprising in light of the multiple roles that P53 protein plays in the G1 checkpoint. The P53 protein activates other genes whose products halt the cell cycle, allowing time for DNA repair, activate genes whose products participate in DNA repair, or activates genes that initiate cell death when DNA damage cannot be repaired. A damaged P53 gene can result in the cell behaving as if there were no mutations. This allows the cells to divide, propagating the mutation in daughter cells and allowing the accumulation of new mutations. In addition, the damaged version of P53 found in cancer cells cannot trigger cell death or apoptosis. There's another video recommendation, but I'm going to not do those uh, for this purpose. And that brings us to the end of Section 3. Join me next time for Section 4, Prokaryotic Cell Division. That brings us to the end of Section... Oh, i got to fix this. I want to fix this now.